What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Got an exciting video for y'all today. So we are up here in North Arkansas. Uh, we're actually up here because um, Cypress and Summer are attending a birthday party. I just dropped Jay and the kids off and I have about an hour and a half to kill. And so what I have done is I have returned some old stomping grounds and I'm gonna try to catch some fish. Right behind me over here is a levee, but down on the other side of the levee is a ditch and this ditch is legendary. Um, it was like the only place that I could catch fish up here when I lived up here in this part of the state. Same for J2. And for whatever reason, it is absolutely loaded with tons of different species, including spotted bass, largemouth, gar, catfish, all different sunfish. I mean, you can think of it, it lives in this tiny little ditch. It is unreal. And what's cool about it is that it runs clear water. There's a discharge plant right here. And I don't know if that's the reason why it pumps out clear because it's clear a long way downstream. Uh, but normally upstream of here, it's pretty murky, but I'm excited. I haven't fished here since early last fall or late last summer. Um, and I mean, this place is special to me. I mean, I've caught my personal best spotted bass out of this tiny little ditch at four pounds and two ounces. I would love to do some PB hunting today. So we're gonna hike over there. We're gonna spend some time fishing a couple of these deep holes in this little stretch. This ditch goes on a long ways. And I'm hoping that maybe we can go explore a little bit further downstream at some point. But like I said, we don't have a lot of time to spend, but this is a place where it can go down in a hurry. So we're gonna climb down there and see what we can ultimately get into. So if y'all are excited to tune into today's adventure, do me a huge favor, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump over this levee and let's see if we can catch a big old fish. Let's go. All right, let's take our first look at the ditch. How's it look? Oh, baby. Okay, so upstream of the discharge is very muddy. But right here where the water's coming in, looks like it's clean and clear, but it also looks really low. Normally it's a really deep hole right here, but I can see the bottom. I can see a lot of small fish swimming around. There could be a bass right there. Definitely could be a bass right there, but this is the spot where I caught my personal best spotted bass at four pounds and two ounces. It was a beast. But we have a couple of spots downstream we can go check, have some deep holes. Uh, I think we're probably gonna have better luck down there. This just looks a little bit too shallow for some reason. Normally it's a little bit higher, but you know, I haven't been up here in months, so really can't expect anything too much. I'm just glad that it is clean and clear, but we're gonna get after, we're gonna go down there and see if we can't catch a couple. There we go, fish on, fish on. First fish in the ditch is a little spotted bass, I think. Chonker. It is a chonky monkey, look at that guy. Out here fishing the roadside ditch, and we got a football of a spotted bass. That thing is so thick. He honestly looks smaller down there. But we cracked him on the old six cents Busa Ned Worm on a weedless Ned Head. Got a deep hole right here, everything is really shallow. A whole lot more shallow than it normally is. And uh, this is the first little deep hole I've came to. Um, I'm gonna fish downstream to this first shoal see if we can get some more. But if not, we're gonna move to another spot where I think it has some deeper water. But that's a good start right there for sure. Oh, oh, he's grumpy. Just an old ratchet roadside ditch. And our first good sized bass of the day. It's crazy that my personal best uh, spot of bass came from this place. But it has me excited. We could tango with some beasts today. He was probably a pound and a half. He really wasn't very long at all. And he was literally just right here underneath my feet. Gotcha! Second fish of the day. Is that a largemouth? It's another spotted bass. About a third of the size of the first one we just caught. That's number two. Just right here in front of me, this little hole. I was hoping to catch this fish a little further upstream. There's a little discharge pipe up there but it's so shallow and there was a lot of fish swimming away. I didn't see any bass. Doesn't mean there wasn't any, but I saw a ton of a different sunfish scattering around. So I just decided to jet down here to this first hole. And um, I also want to work my bait you know, upstream um, with the current flowing the bait downstream. I got another bite, a little sunfish, which had some worms. I bet there is a ton of bluegill dang. I've caught some big bluegill in this hole too. I feel like it used to be a lot deeper, but that could just be, you know, with a lot of sediments flowing in here, kind of filling it in a little bit. I'm also seeing there's a box of worms up here. I'm also seeing some old 
Uh, there's like a, a bag of hooks. There's probably been a little bit of angling pressure too. Well, I'm sure it's probably not that much angling pressure in the middle of winter. That's a nice one. That's a big one. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Is there any chasing him? None chasing. That's a fat spot. Golly, it's a fat spot. I love fat spots. Look at that thing. Look how fat he is. I'm gonna throw him on the scale. Boost a Ned. And that is our third spotted bass today. But I mean, look at that, guys. Look at how chunky that thing is. The biggest spotted bass I've ever caught was four pounds and two ounces, and it came, I mean, literally 100 yards upstream where that discharge pipe is at. But that is incredible. What a thick and healthy bass. Ooh, I was hoping to get on some fat spots real quick while we were out here. I'm gonna put him on a little scale real quick just to get a bearing. He's gotta be close to two with how fat he is. Just over it, 2.04, right at two pounds. Just a fat, 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 fat specimen. You'd love to see it. Roadside ditch, fat spotted bass. There he goes. All right, there's three. Boosting Ned doing work. There's the bait again, a little boosting Ned worm. That's three fish in this little hole. You would think that they would get kind of spooked, and they might. Might only get three out of it. But who knows, we might get four. Okay, we don't wanna to waste too much time fishing this one spot. We don't have a ton of time to spend, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the walk down here. There's a shoal, and then from the shoal up is all pretty deep water, and then downstream from the shoal is a little hole. So we're gonna make that run. We're gonna climb up here to hopefully not spook any fish. The water is crystal clear. I like to try to stay as far back from these fish as possible when I can, even though I caught those fish right there right beside me. It's nice, it's nice they got this all mowed. A lot of times I'm walking through uh, grass that's over my head to get from point A to point B. But it's been a while since I've been up here. So I'm just excited that we've already caught a couple of fish, got a couple of nice ones. Let's see if we can't expand on that. Get a couple more in this one and a half hours that we have to fish. I'm actually gonna fish from a knee just to kind of make my presence a little bit less known to these fish. I mean, these fish can see up and see a big old tall figure wearing an orange jumpsuit. And I think that that would likely spook them. That's a fish, that's a big one. It worked, sit down work. He's got, oh, he's getting me in that crap. Come over that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh, another big fat spot. Another big fat spot. Okay. Oh, I think I don't know if I can get him up here. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's go. Oh man. Look at that one. That is a beautiful spotted bass, guys. He's not as big as the last one I caught, but he's probably, you know, I mean, just under two. If the, if the other one was a 2.03, this one here is probably like a 1.95. What a beautiful bass. Such a cool place to catch them too. It's definitely not as deep right here in this hole where I caught, and where I just caught this one than it was where I caught the other three. That is number four. Four beautiful spotted bass. No largies yet, but that's okay. I'm here really to catch a big spotted bass. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Got that little tiny mouth, beautiful eyes. Okay, we're gonna give him a light toss back into the ditch. Perfect, and you can see him just torpedo right off. Heck yeah. I didn't actually feel that bite. I just felt my line, everything get kind of mushy and I kind of thought I might've been, you know, tangled up with some scum. There's, there's a lot of trash in this ditch, unfortunately. Just a lot of pollution. There's bags, tires. There's some scummy grass down there too. There's not really any like sticks or anything, um, but there's a lot of stuff down there that could make your bait go a little mushy. And that's what I thought had happened, but it in fact turned out to be just a, another solid spotted bass. I got bit again. Another one, another one. Oh my gosh, even bigger, bigger, bigger. That might be a large mouth. That might be a large mouth. I think it's a largey. Oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna go down here. I feel scared to lift him up. That's a large mouth. Large mouth, can we go down here to get him? 
I just don't wanna fall in. This stuff is very slick. Okay, we got a nice little ledge right here. Come here. Come here. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, man, look at his head. Look at that, look at that hump on his head, guys. These fish are weird. I've caught some very strange and deformed looking fish out of here. I don't really know what the genetics are like in a ditch like this, but that is another spectacular specimen. First large method, that one there is probably two pounds. Look at that hump. Y'all seeing what I'm seeing? That is crazy, and I felt him thump it, ticked it right off the bottom. Oh my gosh, I have missed fishing this place. It was the only thing good about up here. <laughs> here we're sitting back. Oh, he's grumpy. All right, well now we're down here. So the problem I was kind of worried about is having to pull these fish up the side of the wall, up the side of this really steep bank. I'm using eight pound leader line. And um, if you do get like a nick in it, you know, you're likely to break it. You know, even though this fish is only a couple pounds, just there's a lot of strain on it. So glad we have a little spot right here where we can stand for a moment. He kind of messed up the end of my worm. I'm gonna try to finagle my way around it. So I have to go up there and get a new one. Oh, I could bite the end of it off too, but I think we're good. Love rigging this Busa Ned worm from Six Sense Fishing Weedless. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, an exposed hook on your Ned rig, you know, it's definitely more likely to get snagged, especially in a place like this that's got a lot of, you know, kind of random obstructions down there. And I don't feel like your hookup ratio is any less um, with a weedless hook. I'll leave links, as always, to all the gear we're using today. I'm using the Team 6 rod. This is a 7.4 medium light. Absolutely love this rod. It's got this really cool carbon fiber wrapped handle. Very sensitive. This here's a medium light, so it's got a really soft tip. Makes casting these baits a breeze. Makes loading into the hook set a breeze. And it's a little bit lighter of a rod, so it feels good fighting the fish. You know, you're not overpowering these fish. There's one. That's, oh my gosh, no, we almost had three in a row. Oh, I should have waited just a second longer. Just barely ticked it, they're loaded up. There's a little bit of a ditch, or a little bit of a crevice right beside me right there. And it seems like they're hanging, it's where the current's hitting the bank. It's probably dug out just a little bit deeper. It feels deeper, because I feel like my bait's coming across some shallow stuff and then it drops down. It's also a little bit of structure, a little bit of grass. There's one. Got him, got him. Got him. Oh, another jumper. Another jumper. I think it's a spot. Man, they look so close. Water is clear. It's so cool watching them fight. Oh, man. Another beautiful spotted bass, guys. Up to daddy. There we go. A little bit smaller. Still a fighter. Still gave us a good jump. Can never complain about that. There we go. There we go. Spotted bass number five and fish number six another one pound and a quarter ish no don't drop a pole and don't fall in okay we're gonna send you back nice okay we're making a move right here there's an old rocky shoal i think it used to be a bridge that got detonated some time ago it used to be really deep on the front side of it looks like it's Kind of filled in a little bit. I'm gonna try to stay back. I'm just gonna pitch it over these rocks. I can't really see what's going on. Just wanna see if anything will pop, come out and eat this worm before I get directly overhead on them. Deep enough though, there's one. There's one. Gotcha. Is that another spot? <laughs> oh, it's a largemouth. Largemouth bass, kind of a little skinny guy. That's awesome. Number seven, we are three away all of a sudden. I'm gonna toss him over here. There we go, he's good. He swam upstream, so maybe he won't go downstream and scare these other fish off if there's any more. He bit it pretty instantly in the deepest hole in front of this shoal. Usually right in front of these shoals is where you can find some big ones stacked up. Oh, I got bit again. Anytime I'm fishing current, I always anticipate a big bite on the front side of a shoal. 
There's another little one. Right underneath the rock. And that one is a spotted bass. And a fatty largemouth have been a little bit more lean, but even these small ones, these small spotted bass have had some really thick little bellies. That's cool. Another little spotted bass. Was it number eight? I think that was number eight. Seven or eight, I lost count already. That's bad, I'm so bad with numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and put a new one on. This one here is a little bit worn down. Show the exact bait that I'm throwing right here. This is a newer option from Six Sense Fishing. Um, this is the Busa Ned. It is awesome. I love the entire Busa lineup from the ribbon tail worm to the shaky head worm. But I really have been enjoying this Ned worm. They have some amazing colors. This is kind of just like a smoke with purple and orange flake. The color is called Smalley Smoke Fitting. And like I said, I'm throwing it on a 3 16 ounce weedless net head. I think this is an owner. My line feels a little frayed right there, so I honestly should probably retie. This is not the place where you want to have weak line because there is a ton of, you know, jagged, sharp rocks, tires, washing machines, bicycles, car batteries. There's all sorts of crap in here that can cut your line. A fresh retie never hurt nobody, and a fresh bait never hurt no one. We caught eight fish on one worm. That is not bad. And honestly, I did more damage to the worm getting it stuck on the grass and ripping it up like a maniac. But you see, just a weedless presentation. It has these ribs, you can text pose the hook. And we're mostly weedless. The hook point isn't gonna come out and get stuck. Your head can get stuck in some stuff, but I've just found a lot of success with this worm and that setup. Let's get two more. So we're back up here. We have about 10 minutes remaining that we can fish up here. We're gonna see if we can't. Maybe we need two more to get to 10. I was banking on getting at least one below the shoal and maybe getting one more up here where we started. But we're gonna have to bank on this right here and maybe somehow getting a chance to go hit another section of the ditch. There we go, there we go, there we go. Well, there's number nine if we can land him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at him down there. He ain't got no buddies. A lot of times you'll see multiple swimming around with him. That's another nice one though. Beautiful fat spot. Get up here. Let's go. All right. That's what's up. That is a gorgeous, probably honestly the most colored up one that I've caught. They all look pretty good. They're just fat and healthy. Got that fresh boosting dead in his mouth. I mean, things got a great action down there on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna send our little buddy back down here. Go that way. Oh, they always go, they always swim up. Fish don't like to go downstream, they like to go upstream. <laughs> they also don't like your bait to be worked upstream. So I'm hoping, I'm hitting this spot from a different angle now. I was hitting it kind of fishing straight and kind of more downstream, but now I can actually fish it the right way. I could have fished the right way earlier, but I got ahead of myself, got excited. It happens to us all, we get excited. We don't do what's best. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we were able to achieve our 10 fish goal. I think we're at nine, but I'm officially out of time. I gotta go pick up Jay and the kids. I might see if they'll, let, if they'll let us slip back down here just for a moment longer and see if we can't maybe secure our 10th fish at another spot uh, down the road from here. Um, but yeah, so good to be out here. It's really cold and windy, but um, I'm glad we were able to catch nine fish. I mean, that was less than an hour, guys. I had less time out here than I thought I was gonna have to. But nonetheless, I had an amazing time out here um, in that short span that we did have to fish. Uh, we caught those nine good fish, caught a couple, you know, around that two pound mark. No PBs today, unless we do get to go down and check out one other little spot. But definitely wanna come back out here again soon, put in a little bit of extra time and see if we can maybe wrangle up a new personal best spotted bass because I think we can catch it. That one I caught is still in here. It's probably bigger now. And I think it'd be really cool to catch one up here, but we're gonna pick up the kids. We'll see if we can go down to another spot, but if not, this was awesome. All right, just picked up Jay and the kids from the birthday party. They're in their truck chilling. Uh, the kids are actually going to sleep. Um, but I have one shot to catch fish number 10. I've come downstream to a spot right here on the ditch. 
and um, it's a nice deeper hole. I think there's, I think I'm in the right spot. There's a spot somewhere right around here that has a culvert pipe, and normally those fish hang out by the culvert pipe. There's also a shoal right down that way. I need to make sure I'm in the right spot, but somewhere right around here is the juice, and hopefully we can secure us one more fish. I'm just looking for one, just one. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. There we go. We got a jumper. We got a jumper. That's number 10 if we can land him. Let's go. All right. Well, I'm not in the spot I was looking for, but that is fish number 10. We caught him in two casts down here. That is awesome. I honestly didn't believe that it was him just then. That was easy. <laughs> Beautiful spotted bass. This is the fish that I was wanting to catch to wrap this up with. I really want to check this culvert pipe. It has big ones. I might see if I can't sneak down there real quick and maybe make a couple more casts. But we got our 10th fish down here below the ditch. That was our goal. We're going to send him back. Perfect release. That was awesome. Awesome.